Greetings, everyone. My name is Dr. Krishna Bogan, and I'll be explaining my presentation on Google and why it is the Google Mountain. First of all, I want to emphasize that this presentation is not endorsed or sponsored by Google, nor shows any hate towards the company. <laughs> so let's begin. 90% of the internet users use Google as one of their main search engines. With over 4.5 billion users worldwide of the internet, 4 billion accounts to Google's. 40,000 search queries are done each second on Google's platform. Each day, it goes up to 3.5 billion, and a whole day is a staggering what? And the whole year, it's actually a staggering 1.2 trillion. It isn't really surprising how much Google has provided the users and why the customer is really high. Being a very well-established brand by 2014, Google has done a lot from being a monopoly, having the highest market share, and also the most customers. Being a monopoly helped them become increase their capacity and lower average cost, which is economies of scale. Being an American multinational company that provides internet-related technology, softwares, and hardwares, which ranges from smart home systems, smartphones, and even smartwatches. First founded by the great two Sergey Brin and Larry Page back in 1998, while they were PhD students at Stanford University. Google has came a long way. They compete with large tech brands, which includes from Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, and even Facebook. Now for my title, Google, they move a mountain. What does this actually mean? Mountains are, are places you can climb, but they Google as like Mount Everest, the one of the world's highest mountains and one of the most dangerous. Investors see Google as one of Mount Everest, if you face any problems, you might get into trouble, like a loss of oxygen, oxygen depletion, and even an avalanche. When investors see Google's success, they want to invest more and more. They invest billions and billions of dollars to ensure they can improve as well. But what happens in the end is that Google is such a big company, a monopoly. They have market shares, very, very loyal customers. That includes me. And what happens in the end is that they become bankrupt, no more money in the bank. After the introduction of Industry 4.0, which just started this decade, which mainly relates to artificial intelligence, machine learning, and robotics, companies and other big large tech companies start to invest a lot of money in this. They improve their research and development team, and also this main function of getting into Industry 4.0. Why do they do this? It's to be with the trend and follow what customers want. Google is a user-friendly company, and they want to make sure that they follow them. One such acquisition Google had is of DeepMind, a company founded back in 2010 and acquired by Google for $600 million in 2014. So what does DeepMind do? DeepMind is basically a primary institution or research center that provides Google with user management and also big data analysis. This really helped them a lot. Although, what DeepMind Deep actually has a lot of cost. They lose billions and billions of dollars because it's just a research organization, not direct profit center. So what Google do is produce other items, like do online advertisements, and also hardware like smart home systems, and also mobile phones. DeepMind is used in our daily lives, actually, on your Android mobile phone platform. And I'll just show you right here in Google Assistant. So here are my smartphone, smart, Android smartphone. All I'm going to say is, hey, Google. Play Never Gonna Give You Up by Rick Astley on YouTube, please. So this is one way Google works. This is a YouTube video, but it can do other work with it, like normal search queries. DeepMind is a technology that keeps on evolving and learning. And that's what machine learning is all about. You can't always depend on humans to fix an issue, so machine learning is brought out, and that's to constantly evolve and learn from the mistakes that it's made by itself. Another real-life practical data that you see is a, a technology that has been around for more than five to eight years, and that's predictive text, a small screen that you see on top while you type. And that, that words those are coming up on there are like based on algorithms and the way you type. It, although it's not 100% reliable, and might never be unless you insert a chip in your brain to calculate what's going to happen. So relating back to our title, Google, the Immovable Mountain, 
It's basically a harsh environment. As you know, mountains are pretty harsh and dangerous. So you might ask me, is Google dangerous? I have mixed feelings about this. Google helps me a lot, especially through this COVID time. I can study online courses and also attend classes through Google services and get reliable information. But Google has a lot of fraudulent and explicit content on there. And Google's own frank assessment of itself showed that they have a lot of millions and billions of websites that are available on the internet. Google is trying to reduce this explicit and unwanted data. But what happens in the end is that there are more and more websites just exponentially increasing. It's so hard to counterattack them. What Google brought out is two options. The same search option and the filter explicit results con content option. It really helped out. Google also made sure that they don't have to sell any of their in customer information to third parties, which help people become more trustworthy to Google. But that's not re really right. Google is always hearing you. And one way is which the Google Assistant works, as I have to just say, hey, Google. They're literally waiting for this prompt, and it's silently listening to us. You might be quarreling with your parents, gossiping about a teacher in class, and, or another friend. <laughs> and this might actually, Google is actually listening to you. That's, isn't it scary that a company is actually hearing you? Another tech CEO, Elon Musk, expressed his feelings on it. He said that DeepMind is really essential for Google, especially in the data centers when they interconnect them. You know, data centers are places where our information gets stored, and also they provide and produce a lot of harmful gases and pollution. With DeepMind, it's actually being reduced and optimized. But is connecting AI and machine learning to our personal data really important? That's what he asked. And this could actually become an unintentional Trojan horse, and that's what we want. If AI knows what you're going to do, it can predict what you will be doing and what you're doing, and we don't want that. What if AI literally knows you're going to go to the mall in a month, or like going to another city in a month? We don't want that. So with AI, he also stressed out that if AI literally tracks and its main goal is to destroy humanity, and if we stand in the way, it could actually result into it. And it's not really surprising when he said this. He said this with a serious and stressed tone. A tech enthusiast like him who really supports AI, when he says this, it's pretty scary to see that. So to conclude, artificial intelligence and Google is really interconnected. Google is quite an immobile mountain. It literally knows what we can do using its AI and machine learning features. But if AI stands in the way of us and tries to destroy humanity, that's something that's really dangerous. And we don't want that to happen, right? So what companies and Google needs to do is that they need to ensure they have enough time, resources, and fundings to stop AI at any moment. With this, AI has also many benefits. Like what I said, it can help you go find some reliable information. But we don't want AI to take over us. And hopefully, one day AI will not take over us as this industry is keep on booming. And hopefully, no AI will not take over your lives. Thank you for listening.